to run it down. In this episode, we visit beautiful Port Stephens to check out some potential raid locations. We do a practice run with a new sea anchor, and we do some fantastic spirited sailing. Enjoy. Well, hi everyone. Thanks for joining us again. We've managed to score a, uh, a weekend out of the house and a generally fine weather forecast. And we've headed up to Port Stephens, about two and a half uh, hours north of Sydney. And although we have mostly blue skies and a nice 10 to 15 knots from the east, this forecast this weekend, currently no wind. Very glassy. So I've had to do some motoring. Our intention is to get out to the mouth of Port Stephens and have a look at the uh, sea state. It's predicted as hazardous and there's a bit of a warning out from the Bureau, but I'd like to go out and uh, have a look at the beautiful islands that are out there. Um, and uh, unfortunately, that sunny day, I don't know if you can see it in the background, I can see a squall headed our way already. So I'm expecting mixed conditions from nothing to everything. Cheers. Okay, the middle of uh, Port Stephens is very shallow. I just noticed uh, waves breaking out there in the middle. My father told me of a story of him surfing that <laughs> in his younger years. So we're gonna stay away from there, stick to the channel that comes up the southern side of Port Stephens. And we're still working our way out to the heads to have a look. There is a shallow sandbar under it, so this is probably where they stand up. I put the jib away and I'll just use the main. Less to think about.
but you can see Broughton Island long way off in the distance. The sea is just an absolute washing machine and I don't think this is the day to attempt that. Um, and I'd have to tack into the nor'easter to get up there with the sea on the beam, so it's just not the day. Um, glad to come out here, experience the um, winter gets tired at the mouth of the Port Stephens, but we're going to go back in and explore some of the beautiful beaches and less rocky water that is uh, within the port itself. sailing uh, we've just stopped for lunch the wind is really kicking up and I just heard over the radio someone has capsized back at Soldier Point and they're sending some rescue people out there we will uh, take the downwind run and go and investigate the shallows over here and see what's back further inside Port Stevens but uh, what a lovely spot Beautiful beach. Whoa. Oh gosh, big gosh. Round it up. But what I was trying to look at was that red. It'd be a bugger to try and launch from today with the uh, lee shore belting in. But plenty of beach options around it. I think you'd have to pick your day. Yeah, that freeze has really kicked up. I'm glad I didn't uh, persist with outside. It's a handful in here.
good example of jib only. It's getting too much of a handful and we are running downwind. So I'm still getting four and a half knots just off the jib. Um, it was worth just dropping the main and taking it easy. We're going to look for a creek that is around this next headland and uh, try a bit of gunk holing. I think that's how you say it. forgot to put all my flags on today. That's annoying. Well, after our blazing downwind run across here, uh, doing up to about seven knots, I think, I ended up coming through here under jib alone and then hooked back up. And I'm in this little, uh, where's the glare? I'm in this little creek here. For tonight and we're all set up and we're just having sundowners and watching the world go by oh no the party boat just arrived Well, good morning folks that was a really good anchorage as it was uh, super calm and still but there was quite a lot of traffic in there last night um, this morning beautiful very little wind uh, but I think it's going to fill in again from east or northeast at 10 to 15 but we're staying in the western part of Port Stephens today and just having a little look around Lots of white posts in the water. These are oyster leases uh, out in the shallows. Uh, something to be aware of when boating around uh, Port Stephens. Well, I thought I might run a bit of a practice on uh, deploying a sea anchor. I don't know if you've ever used one before, but I certainly haven't. So I've just done this off internet research. I already know mine is not rigged completely correctly, but we will give it a go. You've never seen one before. It's just a big cone shaped thing. And without any preparation, I've started with the tangle. There's the big uh, cone. On the, on the small end, you've got your trip line with a float. Now my float is a bit homemade because I didn't have time to buy one. So I've just, uh, used an old water bottle so that's my trip line on the uh, actual anchor line itself which 
opens up that way. I've got a length of chain, just a meter, to make that uh, drop below. Now, my research shows me that that chain should be on the boat end, not on the sea anchor end, but I don't have uh, time to change that right now. And the trip line itself only need be a few meters long with floats because you're meant to come up behind your sea anchor when you're finished with it and pick the floats up but I've got the trip line coming all the way back along the anchor warp so it's kind of a bit a continuous loop if you will so I can trip it from from the boat so I'm gonna have a go I'm leaving a static camera go so I'm apologizing for the poor angle at this point and uh, we're out in the middle of Port Stephens and we're just going to give it a go. I just tried dropping the anchor. It's deeper than my anchor line. So let's see what happens. So as mentioned, that's my trip line tied to the pointy end of the cone for uh, retrieval. The main line goes that way. Heads out there. I don't know if you can see against the glare. There's the float. It's supporting the weight of the chain and the, uh, the well, and the bag itself. I've only got about 10 metres out. Uh, that was the bit of line I had. I note that we are still lying with the breeze building 90 degrees to the wind. Okay, well it has pointed into the wind over time. I think the wind had to actually build up a little bit. So what are we at? We're below 10 knots, but we're getting a good ripple now. So the, uh, the retrieval part of it, I'm sorry if the camera wobbles a bit, it's on a long stick mounted to the boat, so it might do a bit of this. So theoretically, I trip the uh, parachute full of water, or cone full of water with this, and we drag it all into the boat, so wish me luck. Yeah, that released the water, it's all coming back in with no resistance whatsoever. There you have it. So that did its job. That might be the way to store it too. Not under all of your stuff like I had. Oh, that was dead easy. So the uh, full length trip line does help. Well, I hope that showed you, well, I hope that showed you something. Um, this is oversized. I bought the medium, which is recommended for boats beyond 4.5 meters. So it's bigger than I required. Cheers. to the Dinghy Cruising Association in the UK who sent me out my Burgi. Thank you to everyone involved in running that uh, association. It's very, very useful. Uh, if you're not a member, join it. You get four fantastic magazines a year. I can highly recommend it.
getting streaks in the water now. That's an alarm bell for me. Coming along the back of coming along the back of the island and seeing streaks in the water. The channel back here that we're following and heading north. Doing a big lap of the western section. Basically, when you're out in stuff like this, you got to think, what can I do to uh, make sure I get home? And for now, the boat's traveling okay. I'm just getting very, very wet. However, I am running for shelter on the western shore. Sorry, not western, the northern shore, uh, where I can hide behind the land. And then we can reassess our options because I can't go directly into that, which is where I want to go. But I can go over there where I will find some shelter. And if I have to wait it out, I can. I've just got to be able to change plans. And just like that, all the problems have gone away. So we're gonna stop here for lunch before we uh, sneak back along the coastline here and then have to cross uh, back over to Soldier's Point. along the coast I have to get over where is my there we go I have to get over there but the wind is coming straight through here and now crossing winds coming from that direction we're attacking across it back to the boat ramp well, the sneaking around the land really worked well. It kept the uh, sea and the wind on the front quarter beam. That brings us to the end of our little journey today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time.